played against Kobe. We played with MJ. I won't ask you who's better, but what were the similarities in the games and what were the differences in the games? Well, the, the, Kobe is the closest thing to Michael. You know, everybody's been compared to Michael. LeBron has been compared to Michael. I don't think LeBron is Michael at all. I think he's a very different player, different mind, mentality, mindset. Kobe has the same mindset and mentality that uh, MJ had. Um, the assassin, the I'm going to rip your throat out with my scoring, you know, low post, uh, dominant fadeaway jumper footwork uh, I thought Kobe's footwork was uh, one of the best parts of his game probably the most um, underrated because everybody focused on his shooting and his athleticism but his footwork got him open and that's where he was so similar to Michael he could just get any shot he wanted and uh, and he never feared missing he didn't care about missing he missed tons of game winning shots and made tons and just went on to the next game and did the same thing over and over again he just uh, just, as I said, just an absolute assassin. I mean, the mentality was so ferocious and competitive, and that's what I remember most. How about one of those questions fans love to debate over beer? If Kobe went one-on-one -on -one with MJ, what would that look like? It'd be fun to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, very similar games, right? Um, you know, Kobe shot a lot more threes. Um, but in Michael's era, the threes weren't as big a part of things. I'm sure he would have worked a lot harder on his threes if he played in the modern era. But so similar in terms of um, you know the footwork, the, the reverse pivot, the fadeaways, um, and I'm sure Kobe got a lot of that by watching Michael. But yeah, that would have been that would have been fun to watch. Between the two of them, who's the king of talk? The king of talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, they're very comparable in that regard, too. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the three-point shooting. Are there other differences that jump out to you? Are there other, other differences? differences? Yeah, what comes out to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think I've probably been over most of it. Uh, like halftime ceremonies that you've been a part of in your career as a player where somebody just re the arena. I mean, you don't have to have yeah, I don't really remember, but uh, you know, being with the Spurs, the Spurs, I thought had it figured out. They did it after, you know. So I was there for uh, Sean Elliott's. Actually, I think I was like the MC for Sean's jersey retirement. This would have been about 2004, maybe or five. And um, you do it after the game. That way, you don't you're not on this time constraint. So I'm kind of confused as to why we would do a Kobe of all people. It's going to take a while. Um, they say 21 minutes. The league is at 21 minutes. Um, I'd say the over/under is 30. Skeptical. Yeah. Are you taking over under? I got the oh, oh, it's for sure over 21. The question is, do we set the the bar higher? I think we do. So let's set it at 28. Set the bar at 28. We'll have a wager, just for a friendly, no money involved. No money. You and I. Thank you. You get to pick over yeah. under right now. 28 and a half or 28. 28. Even. 28. Uh, I'll take over. You got the over. I would take the over too, but. Uh, I think it's going to take forever. The point being, it's like it's such a disruption in the game. And um, I didn't realize it was going to be that long. So when you guys asked me the other day, are our guys going to, I said, yeah, we probably won't even go in. We'll, we'll go into our locker room right away at halftime um, because it's half an hour is too long to be just sitting there. And um, and our, we'll probably, you know, we'll let the guys go in, do their usual halftime routine, um, and then give them the option to come back out and uh, – We'll probably all come back out after 10 minutes, and we'll still get 20 minutes of halftime celebration. Do maybe Kobe can time it for 24? Hey. How about eight? <laughs> I'd prefer eight. Steve, obviously, having you guys on your guard to time of sleep, not worrying about what you mean. But to play a basketball game, my favorite thing to do, my favorite holiday, can't beat that. Do you have any kind of... Do any of them stick out to you in terms of like performances or like team performances? They all kind of get beat because it's Christmas. And, you know, it's just, to be honest, it's just a time for me to just go out there, you know, enjoy the game, enjoy the Christmas spirit, and enjoy everybody. I mean, it just, I mean, it's losses matter, but at that time on Christmas Day, it feels like when we're done playing, it doesn't matter at all. So it's a great moment. You have any memorable Kobe trash talk moments? Yeah, I told this story before about how we played down the like, regular season. It was like the day before All-Star break, and we were beating them pretty good in OKC, okay and we just like, you can't, you can, you can basically, you said you can have 
this game. I can't sit at my table. I got uh, at that time. Did he have five yet? Yeah, they had five championships. So it was just like you guys are playing well, but you don't know what it feels like to hit the, hit the top, you know. And that was that was a little that was a nice little jab right there. You know, as a young player, you feel like you're going quick, and you feel like you're establishing yourself. And then you got a guy who's on another level as far as accomplishments and experience, just push you back down. And, so it was humbling, but it was also motivation. Richard, what do you take away from Kobe, specifically from like the business aspect? I mean, his career and what he's doing you know, most of your time. Brandon, I'm seeing the Kobe game tomorrow. Uh, when you think of Kobe and his career, what, what stands out the most to you? Um, I think it's worth it. Uh, how he took every game like it was his last. I don't think he take, took advantage of any game or uh, any aspect of the game. You want to, to master everything of the game. And uh, he's definitely an inspiration to uh, our generation and, of course, many generations above me. Is there a piece of advice he's given you personally that, that you've held, held on to most? Um, just stand in the moment. Stand in the moment, I think. Uh, the first thing he told me was about the defensive end and how I could be really good on the defensive end. And, um, just, Trying to challenge myself on that end. Brandon, you you got you got here right. I mean, first you were the turning of the page essentially from Kobe. What what in, from your perspective has been kind of his imprint or impact on the team, even from afar? Uh, well, not just from the team. Uh, I think over this league, over this league, he's an inspiration for how hard he works. He kind of sets the bar for um, like one of the greatest players that's ever played this game. So. Uh, when you come in here and uh, you see his, his jersey, there's this number on the wall, and uh, you see all the accolades and everything that he, he's done. Uh, it's just crazy to think that. Kobe, Kobe's talked about how, like, when he got here, he like looked up at the at the jerseys that were retired and and, a, and kind of dreamed of, of getting there someday. Is that something that, as a as a new Laker, as a rookie, you did as well? Is that similar to your experience? Of course. That's why we play this game. Of course, that's why I play this game, to try to be the best in this league. And um, I think uh, to have my number retire here one day or be one of the best players that came through here one day is something of my goal. Do you feel, uh, I know people make a big deal out of the conquer being Kobe's long run. What was your reaction to it? Well, I was so lost in the moment. And, you really don't know what's going on, but just to think um, the 20 years that he's been in this league and have his number eight and his number 24 jersey retired, and I don't know, it's unimaginable that that happened. Uh, just say that I'm very blessed to be in this position. Brandon, what do you remember about playing on Christmas last year? Oh, uh, I remember the atmosphere. Uh, I remember uh, how psyched the fans were, how, how ready we were to play basketball, and um, just how fun it was. So, um, sorry, go ahead. Okay. How much different is that game versus any other game, do you think? The Christmas game? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's too different. I think just the energy in the, in the building is uh, a lot higher. Um, of course, it's, it's um, the time for joy, the time for family, and you get to go out there and, uh, play play a game you've been dreaming of for um, your whole life. Do you feel any pressure in terms of filling those shoes left by Kobe? There was a void after he left. Did you ever feel that pressure to kind of assume that role, and do you still feel that pressure to, to be that guy? Oh, uh, well, I think coming in here every day, and I think I kind of take the pressure off myself by coming in here every day and try to work try to work every single day and try to be the best that I can be. Um, I know that I'm going to be something special and uh, I come here every day to work hard on different parts of my game. So uh, I know eventually I'm going to get there. So I, when you put in the work, I don't think you, you feel the pressure or more so I want to say fear or anything. Brandon, when you say that Kobe's defense stood out to you the most, what part of that approach was most impressive about him? Um, just tenacity, I think. The way he played offense is the same way he played defense. And, uh, you sometimes saw him guarding guys full court. You saw him guarding different positions. You saw him guarding the point guard, uh, shooting guard, small forward, just 
probably the best player on the floor every single night. Uh, to be locked in for that 48 minutes and locked in on the best player and go and score 30 to 40 points every single night is something special. Brandon, does this week seem to be the play with Ron? Now you got the Kobe game, but it's against the Warriors. When you play the Rockets and then the Warriors, you seem to be like you've never gone through anything, but no team. Uh, that is. Um, so it's, it's a test for our young guys. I think uh, a lot of our, our guys' uh, eyes are really wide when you, you play these uh, these really, really good teams. And um, they perform well. We perform well um, just going against these top contenders in this league. And uh, we just had to bring it in these weeks. Bring it in these weeks, of course, and some of the top teams in the West. Brandon, did you ever think that about being Kobe's locker, or once they told you, or once they told you, and then you came your locker, you never thought about us ever again? Or which way? No, I think about it every day. Think about uh, it every day. Um, first, is, first it was the one over at the old practice. Right, right, right. Then it's uh, Kobe's locker at Staples, and then he has a suit locker right beside. Right. right. So uh, I think every day I go in the, in the tunnel, I think about how blessed I am to be in this position, how this guy spent his 20 years in the same position. And um, I have to say, um, it's an honor. It's an honor to try to be there, feel, it, feel some shoes, and uh, just try to come out here and work every day. Brandon, you were like eight, I guess, eight or nine when Kobe changed his number. Like, do you really just remember him as number 24, or do you have memories of Kobe eight? Uh, you know, Probably have like one or two memories from me, number eight, but yeah, it was really number 24 for me. Um, but even watching some of the highlights when he, before he changed his numbers, I mean, this easy to type something on YouTube, and I mean, here's the number he was 